India is home to 1.4 billion people, around a fifth of the global population. It has an extremely rich football heritage and clubs which are among some of the oldest in the world, and yet it has never qualified for a World Cup, and the country remains one of football's great underperformers. And recently, it was also suspended from the sport by FIFA. But why? Football in India is governed by the All India Football Federation, the AIFF, or at least it was, and that was the root of the problem. Back in 2011, the Indian government passed a set of regulations which sought to encourage good practice within sports ruling bodies. Known as the Sports Code, the legislation was also motivated by a need to rid Indian sports bodies of poor leadership and allegations of corruption. Speaking to the Athletics' Joey Durso, Pradyam Reddy, a former footballer turned pundit, described the problem. Some of these federations had people in charge for more than 20 years, who were running them like fiefdoms. Reddy also described organizations being led by people who were 75 to 80 years old, who in some instances do not have knowledge of the sport that they're in charge of. And the sports code has teeth. In 2022, in response to a failure in compliance, the Indian Supreme Court appointed a committee of administrators to oversee Hockey India. The same fate befell the National Table Tennis Federation too. Now, in each case, an appointed group, the COA, was installed to oversee the day-to-day -day running of a national sports federation with the aim of making it compliant with the sports code. And in May, the country's Supreme Court removed the president of the AIFF, Prafil Patel, and his executive committee. Patel is a 65-year-old career politician and member of parliament for the Nationalist Congress Party. And after he completed the maximum three terms as president in December 2020, he remained in office, seeking an extension rather than a fourth term, but with the ambition of seeing a new set of AIFF statutes ratified before leaving his post. So the affair started with an administrative problem. But there have been other problems as well. In addition to poor international performance, and in some regions of India, the failure to provide the adequate structures to encourage greater participation, the AIFF has experienced other difficulties. Ahead of the 2022 Women's Asian Cup, the Indian team suffered the ignominy of having to forfeit their place in their own tournament due to a COVID breach within their squad. In addition to which, the AIFF was the subject of ridicule for having spent the equivalent of £17,500 on three sessions with an astrology firm, with the aim of motivating the team ahead of the cup. At a time when the AIFF repeatedly failed to conduct proper youth leagues, and many prestigious tournaments were forced to shut down, incidents like this will further tarnish the image of Indian football, said Tanamoy Bose, the former India international goalkeeper. It was a scandal, but not nearly as serious as allegations of sexual misconduct which engulfed the under-17 women's team, after a coach, who denies the accusations, was sacked and sent home from a tour. According to journalist Arka Bhattacharya, the surrounding context is also a problem. In the last two decades, we've seen a decline in the quality of Indian football. We've had a very bad run internationally in terms of results, he says, in a claim backed up by the recent FIFA rankings, which places India in 104th place between New Zealand and Madagascar, countries with a combined population of just 33 million people. When Patel was removed and the AIFF was disbanded back in May, the Committee of Administrators attempted to overhaul its constitution, putting it on its collision course with FIFA. The arbitrators tried to do too much, says Pradyam Reddy and FIFA agreed. Their statutes are strict on political influence within football, and in June 2022, they led a delegation which arrived in India with the aim of resolving the situation, setting deadline dates for the creation of a new constitution and the staging of elections to leadership positions. From there, deadlock, and primarily in the area of eminent player representation. In its draft constitution, the Committee of Administrators had proposed an executive committee 50% comprised of eminent players. FIFA disagreed, citing its own statutes which limit the number of player members within an executive committee to 25%. Other areas of contention also included the COA maintaining the right to appoint an acting president from outside the organization should a sitting president be unable to carry out their job, 
and also a battery of modifications to the structure of domestic football in India, including changes to promotion, relegation and control of the country's highest league. Fast forward towards the end of the summer and through several rounds of posturing and rhetoric to August the 16th, when the Bureau of FIFA Council announced that it had unanimously decided to suspend the All India Football Federation with immediate effect due to undue influence from third parties, which constitutes a serious violation of the FIFA statutes. What FIFA was saying was that the Indian Supreme Court, via the committee of administrators that it had appointed, was exercising an undue level of influence on Indian football. And this created 10 days of chaos, and not least because India was on the verge of staging the Under-17 Women's World Cup. However, government pressure would see the COA terminated and power transferred back to the AIFF on the 22nd of August, before finally the FIFA ban was rescinded on the 26th. The Under-17 World Cup is due to take place as planned, but according to an official statement, with the promise that FIFA intends to monitor the situation and provide support to the AIFF ahead of their September 2022 elections. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.